we, uh, we don't have any subsidies from government. We had a startup capital from government, which, the, which was the basis for our creation. But after that, it's a pure commercial operations. We don't have at the moment nothing from government and we operate on an open market from, from Estonia and to different destinations. We have won a couple of tenders and uh, it was a Swedish tender to operate between Örebro and Copenhagen but uh, it is just for, for covering the operations on the public service obligation, same as done in, uh, inside Russia or any other country. We are 100% owned by the government in Nordic Aviation Group. However, we have a daughter company who is actually operator, uh, who is a, a holder of the AOC, Airline Operating Certificate, and that, uh, that daughter company is 51% owned by us and 49% owned by our strategic partner, Lot Polish. But, but uh, uh, as such, Nordic Aviation Group, the own, uh, mother company, is fully owned by the Estonian state. Our, our, our daughter company, Regionjet, has at the moment 15 aircraft and they, they have recently been, I mean, we started the year with six aircraft and now ending the year with 15. It's been such a roller coaster. I mean, it's been all of those positive problems. Where to get additional crew, where to get additional aircraft. Where, <laughs> so so it's, it's been quite a year. Yes, we, we already know that we will be growing next year and minimum we will be at the end of next year 20 aircraft but uh, there is a lot of capacity opportunities. I mean, there will be some growth from Tallinn for our own operations, but we'll be also growing uh, into ACMI businesses, same as we are at the moment providing four ATR 72600s for SS, and we're operating five uh, CRJ 900s for Lot Polish. So we'll continue to also uh, develop that, uh, that field to look for more ACMI opportunities, but we'll also continue to look more PSO opportunities. As, uh, as I said today, that. We're stepping on three pillars. One is commercial operations from Tallinn. Uh, one is ACMI operations for others. And third pillar is PSO operations. Operations where we don't take commercial risk, but we manage the route. So, so all of that ideally should end up uh, in a 30-30. <laughs> It's something which we have considered. We, our next summer route plan is fixed. So next summer there will be no more uh, new routes to Russia. Uh, we are just increasing on St. Petersburg. Whereas 2019 we are considering uh, several Russian destinations at the moment uh, in the analysis phase. And uh, we will be making our announcement on these uh, next summer. True, but uh, Moscow has uh, very high competition. I mean, Aeroflot is operating twice daily, and I mean, there is no doubt they have very strong carry, and uh, and they do have a good product. So we need to find our our niche, and if we if we can't get our segment, our niche, then there is uh, there is also no way how we can uh, become profitable and uh, and successful. So if we find a successful segment which we could attract, then we'll definitely go for that. If not, then uh, then maybe at a later time. If we can find something which Aeroflot can't do, either different schedule or different airport or uh, or a different uh, customer group, or if we can, uh, so there are different ways. Or if we can use a propeller aircraft to get the cost down, or so so there are different options. Uh, if I had the answer today, then I would also uh, already announce the route. <laughs> So, so, we, so we need to uh, see what are our opportunities. But the Russian market as such is very strong uh, on our agenda. And I mean, uh, truth be told, uh, we are also interested in feeding uh, uh, Moscow, St. Petersburg and other Russian markets via Tallinn to, for example, Ukraine, where we are operating both Odessa and, and Kiev as of now and and we also have have ambitions to connect russian traffic onwards to scandinavia and western europe but but, uh, but i mean tallinn is uh, is no hub we have some regional connectivity but it's uh, it's no sheremetyev or nukova <laughs> That's true that we are looking at different fleet options. Uh, we have now fixed our propellers. These are going to be ATRs, which we took in this year five. We have also fixed that our regional jets will be bombarded CRJ 900s. Now the question is for the next step, what should be our narrow bodies? And I mean, uh, uh, truth be told, 
that decision is not yet fixed and uh, and I'm not actually even ruling out uh, Russian type aircraft because uh, I mean from from the numbers which they have promised the performance it's very interesting I mean from from the numbers in terms of uh, uh, fuel economics in terms of the cost in terms of uh, seeding it is very interesting there is there is no doubt about it but now the question is will they be able to also deliver what the, what is in the numbers and and when because every new aircraft type uh, it makes us cautious because we've seen the delays which uh, came with the A380, which came with the 787, which, I mean, MRJ in uh, Mitsubishi is still on ground 10 years later. <laughs> so it, it makes us cautious, but of course, I mean, uh, Irkut is already flying. I mean, it, uh, 